Father, thank you. Quickly, we are going to call on the God of vengeance to fight our battle. And the word of today is the Lord's table. This is not the time to hold on anything or to hold back anything. Whatever God is delivering to you, whatever God is saying to you needs immediate attention. Amen. In the name of Jesus. As we begin to take on this song and this prayer, I want to quickly get into battle and warfare to ask God to do what? As a matter of fact, I may not have time to pray for long, but I want to teach one or two things. This is the time when the God of vengeance will fight our battles. You see, some of us don't know God as a God of vengeance, but I would like to teach it by the scripture, establish it. And when you understand it and establish it, there are battles you have no business fighting. Again, I repeat, there are battles you have no business fighting. Number two, there are people around you who want to upset you. You have no business to reply them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Once you understand it, it becomes your mindset. Somebody say mindset. When the matter comes, you leave it for God because he definitely fights it in the name of Jesus. You waste a lot of energy, you waste a lot of time fighting battles that don't belong to you. Battles you have nothing to do with. While we go ahead with that, I may have to take like the next 30 minutes to deal with that so that by 7 o'clock I can get to the lost table. We have to quickly also get to the lost table because that is the place of preservation. There is a need for preservation and there is a need to understand battle and warfare and then to trust God on the battle line that he will fight for you and then you do your own need for your own. What you have to do is to set up the lost table. Amen. Amen, somebody. You have to do what? Set up the lost table while you trust God that he will fight your battle. Amen, somebody. Are you following me? You have to trust God that he will fight your battle. Then you have to set up the Lord's table. These are two things that are very critical from now till the end of the year. And for a nation from now till February. These are things that this nation, every person in this nation needs to understand these two things. Once you understand it, you are secured in Jesus' name. Amen, somebody. Father, we bless your holy name. We worship you. I'm one person that is so grateful to God for his mercy. Have you heard God? Has God told you what to do? Have you understood what God is saying? When you understand God's timing, you understand God's season, you understand what God is doing, then you need not to fight your battles. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. As I was reading the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the Bible said there is a time for war. There's a time for peace. The Bible said there's a time to kill. There's a time to live. There's a time to be quiet and there's a time to speak. Well, I was looking at that scripture yesterday. I was asking myself, what does that mean? And I understood that as the Bible said, the question Jesus, when he came before Pilate, Pilate was excited to see him because he had heard so much about him. And he wanted Jesus to come and defend himself. But the Bible said he said nothing. That was a time for him to be silenced. There was a time Jesus sent a word to them and said, go and tell that fox. There is a time when the hour comes. The Bible said that the wicked one cometh, but he shall find nothing in me. Jesus took out time to take care of his life. Jesus took out time to position himself. He made sure that he didn't have to defend himself. The Bible said concerning the Holy Spirit, Spirit. when they will call you up on the grounds of accusation he said the holy spirit will give you what what to say that is to say that you don't have to defend yourself allow your defenses in the hands of god amen somebody the bible said in the book of isaiah chapter 53 he opened not his mouth that word had encouraged me sometime in the past you don't have to you don't have to defend yourself we're in the season you don't have to defend yourself you're in the season where you don't have to fight your battle describing jesus he said he opened not his mouth why did not open his mouth because he knew that the hour had come he had taken care of the business by sanctification he had positioned himself to be in right terms with god now what am i saying it's not as though he didn't have challenges the bible said when he came to Gethsemane, at that hour he himself was overwhelmed the bible said even the angels had to minister to him at that time he had to depend on god almighty he knew that it's going to be the power of god his father and the holy spirit that will see him through those battles this morning we are connecting to the presence we are connecting to the throne of heaven we are connecting to the essence we are activating the angels who fight our battles we are releasing ourselves everything that we know into the hands of god and we are saying god fight our battles. 
David lamented. He said, those who hate me with that cause are more numerous than the heads of my head. Those who want to destroy me, my enemies for no reason outnumber me. They make me repay what I did not steal. Psalm 64. Let's look at from verse 1 to 4. They make me repay what I did not steal. The Bible said, and, and, and they shoot in secret at the blameless. Suddenly they shot at him and do not fear. Now this is the position of the wicked man. This is the position of men who fight men who are innocent you've done nothing but they will not stop but hear me today one thing we have to do is we have to search our hearts before i go into this meeting make sure that there's no anger bitterness jealousy or any evil thought for anybody make sure that your heart is pure don't come from god this man did this do this to him no that's not it. Because many times, those that you think are the problem are not the problem. You don't even know your enemies. You don't know. It's God who knows them. So first and foremost, you have to delight in the light of God. You have to delight in the light of God. The Bible spoke about the eyes of God. The eyes of God is everywhere. And I'm the apple of God's eye. You can't touch the apple of God's eye without God knowing. God's eye is watching all over you. God's eye is everywhere and you are the apple of that very eye according to the word of God in Psalm 64 verse 4 that they may shoot in secret at the blameless suddenly they shoot at him and they do not fear there are people who are set to shoot but guess what Romans chapter 12 verse 19 says do not avenge yourself Romans chapter 12 verse 19 says do not what avenge yourself as this word is coming, you are being released from a battle you don't have any business fighting. Can I hear you? Amen. In the name of Jesus, he said, Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to what? For it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. You know, if I didn't have to preach any other message this morning, but this is the scripture before you, and you get it, would have had. A word that will carry us through the season. Vengeance is mine. And I will do what? Repay. Vengeance is mine and I will do what? Repay. Have that behind your mind. No matter the level of offense. You don't have to be bitter. You don't have to be angry. You don't have to be jealous. You don't have to become wicked. You don't have to fight for yourself. Allow God to fight your battle. Beloved, do not avenge yourself. But rather give place to what? For it is written vengeance is mine romans chapter 12 verse 19 uh, i think i will just want to do something let me just check on this my new living translation version but if media can also help me get it so that all of us can look at it i want to look at that scripture again romans 12 19 thank you very much he said dear friends never take revenge leave that to the righteous anger of god for the scripture says i will take revenge i will pay them back says the Lord look at that again say dear friend never take what revenge never take revenge I believe this word is here to deliver somebody today in Jesus name the scripture says what never take what revenge never you take revenge leave that to the righteous anger of what God why do you have to leave it to the righteous anger of God there are things we thought were right things we thought we had concluded but we were wrong we were what wrong if you are not God the Bible said that his anger is righteous God knows the deep things God knows the secret things God knows who hurt who God knows what they did when you were not there he knows the secret things for the scripture says I will take revenge I will pay them back says the Lord so don't think that God is unjust that he does not see when men are treated unjustly or that God will not take his uh, no God God sees God sees you can fight men physically but there are some powers higher than you that you cannot fight for example you can fight the poverty okay that is disturbing you but you cannot fight the spirit of poverty when you don't know where it is made okay you can begin to say i will deal with this you cannot locate evil altars that are being raised altars of sacrifice it's only god that can locate these sac altars and fight for you this is in god has been speaking to me about so many evil altars of sacrifices that are that are raised in various places and um i'll soon be dealing with that praise god 
That's why we have to understand the Lord's table. If you must be able to deal with evil what? Altars. You must understand the Lord's what table. This is the season. There have been more altars raised in this nation than ever any season that we know. So much altars are there and we must be able to allow God to locate these altars and fight for us. No man can fight your battle. It's only God that can. He knows you are tomorrow. He watches over you are today. Day and night, he never slumbers. It's only God that can fight that war over your health, academics and what? And career. God knows the best and appropriate punishment for your enemies. God knows the secret place they're hiding. God knows the secret place that what hiding. Can you stand? Let's take up this prayer point. Say, God of vengeance, arise on my behalf today and fight for me in the name of Jesus. Can you rise up and pray that prayer? Say, God, arise. God of vengeance, arise this morning in Jesus' name. Begin to mention the name of your loved ones. Bring your family on the altar and ask God to arise. The battle lines that are drawn for no sake, for nothing. You don't have to look for trouble. Just People just look at you and they are jealous. People look at you, they are angry. They don't even know what you are suffering. But they already, they feel that you have everything working for you. And this is the wickedness that is going on. If God of vengeance does not fight for you, there is no way you can rise in life. God has to fight for you to rise. There are battles if God does not fight it. Those battles have decided this is your limit. Begin to say, oh God, God of vengeance arise. Whatever powers that have caught me short, that declares I shall not rise. Father, deliver me in the name of Jesus. I declare I shall arise. Oh God, I shall arise in the name of Jesus. Psalm 18 verse 17 says, he delivers me from my strong enemies. Psalm 18 verse 17. He delivers me from my strong enemies. He said he rescued me from my powerful enemies. From those who hated me and were too strong for me. He delivers me from them. That is to say, you can remember how God delivered David out from the hand of Goliath. Out of the hand of Goliath. There are some people who hate us so much. And I tell you sincerely, it is God who knows them and only him can do what? Avenge them. They hate us so much for no reason. I believe this morning and I decree and declare as I prophesy to you. Are there battles that have been set? Projections that are behind sicknesses, behind death, behind death, behind negative dreams. Every strong enemy that is ongoing in your life battles against your career. I declare and declare in the name of Jesus that grace is being released unto you to defeat those wicked battles in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare you shall conquer them in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare these powers are conquered in this season in the name of Jesus. But there's something you must learn. You must learn persistence. You must learn what? Persistence. He will definitely avenge for you, but you must learn how to forgive and how to persist. These are two things you must learn. One is how to do what? How to forgive. Another is how to persist. Why do you have to learn how to persist and how to forgive? Sometimes there are battles that leave us, we are already negative and we are already polluted. Don't allow them pollute good things in your life. Amen, somebody. As soon as you allow any negative emotion and the people that are called avengers of your father's house and they show up, without you knowing it, troubles you cannot explain, they begin to express themselves. They begin to express yourself. So you have to make sure that you are as a vessel that is pure, as a vessel that is what? Sanctified. Okay? There are some satanic powers which only mandate to stop good things from flowing into your life. Even when good things are coming, they pull it before they come. We're going to pray this morning over them. I'm trusting God because this is an urgency in the spirit. There's somebody that God needs to attend to and it has to be immediate. Amen, somebody, because of what is at stake right now. And if you are that person, can you begin to thank God for opportunity given to us to be in the presence of God this morning and the world that has come unto us this day concerning the God who has promised to avenge for us. Begin to thank God that there is a world that has come and hold on to the word of God today that he is the God of vengeance. Decide not to avenge for yourself. Decide not to fight the battles. Make up your mind and put your faith on the work of God. Forgive, forget, release, let go 
go in the name of Jesus. Let go. There are breakthroughs and rising that come when we come into our season to know God. For money, there were things we would have done. I remember he was so hot, he said, I will react. I said, leave it. Let God do it for you. Sometimes we start off battles, we don't even know how to finish it. Anyone that is here, Emma, this is Christmas. This is when people are coming home. You know, wedding, burial, that's when people went. Oh, you didn't attend my own. Uh, you didn't come for my child's own. You didn't do this, so I will do back what you did to me. Can you drop that and can you make up your mind today not to join in that battle? Amen. Somebody, as you free yourself, are you ready to pray? Make sure that you have nothing hindering you from this prayer. Oh God of vengeance, arise and deliver me now in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. Say, oh God of vengeance, arise and deliver me now in the name of Jesus. As you make up your mind to release yourself from unknown and untold battles, say, oh God of vengeance, arise and deliver me now in the name of Jesus. Arise and deliver me now. Now you are making up your mind, you are not getting into that battle. And you are saying, oh God, of vengeance arise now and today and deliver me in the name of Jesus. Today I decree and declare in the name of Jesus every avenging spirit from the kingdom of darkness running after your life, running after your family, running after your career, running after your destiny. I decree and declare the alliance in the name of Jesus. I command in the name of Jesus today every avenging spirit from the kingdom of darkness. I command them to die in the name of Jesus. I command them to die in the name of Jesus. I command them to die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. of Jesus. Now, these are avenging spirits. Just like we have a God of vengeance. From the kingdom of darkness, they have their own avenging spirits. Avenging spirits are spirits that are released. For example, in a family, somebody goes to your compound and then collects sand and takes it to an altar that belongs to the kingdom of darkness and goes to lay a petition against your family. Now, when somebody takes their property or your person and takes it to an evil altar to go and lay a curse when they have completed that sorcery or divination and judgment, evil altars release avenging spirits those avenging spirits are intended to attack the person that has been brought to the devil's courtroom there are so many people who encounter those spirits some of them left them unsolved until year after year until they came to nothing that was a voice they heard hear me a man that is called elijah that is a man that had taken out 450 400 prophets of who ashrot and and then um, yeah then just a voice that was released it was an avenging spirit that was released from the altar of jezebel he said let's by this time tomorrow if you are not like those that were immediately that spirit took him over then you saw a great man that god had prepared for three whole three and a half years running for his life it makes you afraid. It makes you lose confidence in yourself. It disconnects destiny. It stops men from pursuing what God has called them to do. This altar this morning is charged to deliver you. To deliver your son. To deliver your daughter. To stop every avenging spirit. Every cause that was released over your life and destiny. I am here to declare and declare to you. That God has released a commanded blessing. I said a commanded blessing. I said a commanded blessing blessing for you your family and your destiny in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ the lord will have me to bring to you blessings i will not be able to handle it but by next week tuesday it will be loaded by those blessings the lord began to say to me you shall be the blessed of the blessings of god your life shall show the blessings of god why the opposite of course is his blessing 
opposite of causes is what blessing and i would like to dedicate one day and that will be next tuesday if jesus tarries and by his mercy to pour down those blessings because you are appointed to be blessed you are appointed to be released you are appointed to be delivered and not to be caused in the name of jesus christ but you are going to do me a favor from this hour stop hearing anybody saying i curse you no man has that power to curse you stop hearing the voice of any man challenging your integrity or challenging your position with god today that voice is silence and forever in the name of jesus i declare and declare every negative utterance and voice that is fighting for your liberty they are silenced now and forever in the name of jesus christ Ah, mother go shagan de gade. Watch out, watch out what God is about to do. Tineke tinife romamu. I tell you, God is about to turn the enemies of your destiny. The did he that udubu shagan de gada, malagan de udubu shagan de gada. You came here hopeless, as if there is no hope, as if you don't know your direction. Let me hold on to the second message, the lost altar. Once we come to the lost table, which is the lost altar, you will understand why this is the morning of your turning point. When the God of vengeance takes over, the avenging spirits, they don't only stop, they don't only, the activities are not halted, but they are reversed. They are what? They are reversed to their source. A man that is called Haman. Haman has set up a plot and a ploy that has been concluded on how to destroy the Jews. Who is he to determine and to conclude? A man's destiny, another man's life. You did not, you did not fashion, you did not create, you did not give better. And you wake up and you really think that you have the power to end the life and the destiny of another man. How can you do that? That's what we see in the life of Haman and Mordecai just as a man was coming in and he didn't know that Mordecai was coming in while at that same time the king was asking what shall we do for a man who has honored the king and just at that same time people were there testifying about what should happen for Mordecai and then who was coming in Haman Haman thought it was him he said why what go and bring a horse that the king rode nobody has ever ridden get the clothes the garment of the king and get the man that will walk through the town and who will parade the glory of the man he never expected that the man he was planning to hang that god was planning for his decoration i prophesy and i decree and declare in the name of jesus that god shall put the enemy of your destiny to shame in the name of jesus to shame in the name of jesus to shame in the name of jesus the lord will help me to say this and i will repeat it this is the season those who are waiting and watching to see whether you will cry they shall be put to shame i said they shall be put to shame they will wait and they wait forever because it will never come to pass in the name of jesus they must bow in the name of jesus mother boy for the Lord shall disappoint the crafty and the devices of the wicked shall be frustrated in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus and when God begins to walk against a man as he was just getting home and was telling his wife what just happened even the wife and the wife's friends and the family that were enjoying his booty they went and told him you mean this happened to you so long as you have begun to fall before the eyes of Mordecai you are going to reach ground you will reach ground so the people that actually that began to return the spirit of avenging against him were his own wife and family by the time the wife was still talking instantly servant came and said the king is calling you as soon as he was stepping in he only meant to go and beg the queen but every action he was taking he was now making mistake for the queen to come in and say for the king to come in and say so you are even insulting my wife right before me 
in this has it gotten to this before he could finish talking somebody that was there was pointing at the gallon and said see what he has raised evidence somebody said evidence and the king quickly said they covered his face the king didn't say anything and they took him to the gallon I prophesied this morning every gallon that has been laced whoever has gone to set up any satanic gang up any evil against your life and your destiny any spiritual son daughter family member on this altar that anyone has raised a gallon we return that avenging spirit to guide whoever has set a gallon to that gallon in the name of Jesus to that gallon in the name of Jesus I decree and declare the judgment of heaven on this altar in the name of Jesus he delivered me from my strong enemy from those who hated me for they were too strong for me that's the morning we are this morning and the word of God had this to say right here and then it was instant it was eminent because it was immediate the rain had favor the rain was given to her and she began to rewrite every judgment that the wicked has passed against your life and destiny from the altar declaring this morning they are rewritten in the name of Jesus. We tear every evil contention, certificates, and judgment of destruction and death that has been issued from any altar of wickedness. There is a ring that cannot be rewritten. That is whatever is signed by the signature of the king of Persia. And that ring was given to us and say, seal it by yourself. What of if God is telling you this morning to pray a certain prayer now and settle some issues? Let it be sealed from the altar. Can you open your mouth and begin to talk to God? You know what has been going on you don't want. Whether you are online or you are following, just talk to God about it. You are tired. You want to see a change. You know them. Maybe they don't know you or you don't even know them. But what you know and you are aware of is that there are enemies that are strong. And you are saying, God, deliver me from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. Satanic avengers pursuing my life and family, business and academics, career for destruction. You are a liar, die in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Satanic avengers pursuing my life, pursuing my family pursuing my business pursuing my career these are the reason why you rise but you can't stay something keeps pulling you down command them die in the name of jesus die in the name of jesus every dark spirit of vengeance destroying good things in my life enough is enough enough is enough every dark spirit of vengeance destroying good things in my life i don't know what it is but i've seen it opportunities come i get a good job but it just keeps making me to misbehave this morning i command it to die in the name of jesus avengers of my father's house pursuing my life for destruction what you did in the life of my father you cannot do it in my life you cannot do it in the life of my children right now i command you to die in the name of jesus yes you are avengers of my father's house those things that you did not allow my father to enter into the powers that stopped my mother being premature death i cancel it it will not be so in my own life in jesus name every evil power with satanic mandate to destroy good things in my life command it to die command it to die command it to die in the name of jesus any evil power with satanic mandate there's an evil power when he has a satanic mandate it is an empowerment but command in the name of jesus let that satanic mandate die in the name of jesus die in the name of jesus die in the name of jesus now secret avengers of my family these are idols you don't know about them but you can say to them enough is enough command them to die in jesus name command them to die in jesus name avenger idols from my village shrine stopping good things in my life 
declare enough is enough we have some village idols we have some village shrines you were not there but your name was added to their covenant and they've taken right from that to pursue and to harass your life command this day that those avenger idols that are serving some of them were abandoned nobody is servicing them and they are angry because nobody is servicing them there may be somebody here you are even dedicated to serve the idol and the idol has one that you can never rise or become something until you return to serve it decree and declare today in jesus name every such avenger idol that has followed my destiny unknown to me powers that have been assigned to stop good things in my life this is the money you are buried i declare and declare enough is enough in jesus name i declare you are buried I declare you are buried in the name of Jesus. Declare today, oh God of vengeance, where are you? Arise and fight for me in the name of Jesus. Say, God of vengeance, arise and fight for me. Arise and fight for me. Arise and fight for me. Stand up and make these declarations. I said everybody must be on your feet. Command this hour, oh God of vengeance, arise. In the name of Jesus, declare and decree in the name of Jesus. Oh God of vengeance, arise. Arise and fight my battles in the name of Jesus. I see you coming out of the pit. I see you coming out of the hole. I see you coming out from the place of bondage. Now come out. Arise. 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 In the name of Jesus, and fight my battles. somebody thank you holy ghost recap what can't take about thank you holy ghost yes avenge of any human blood shed by my ancestors that are pursuing me avenge of any human blood you know today we want to do battles of blood battles of what blood that's what we are getting into because most of these avengers that we are talking about are battles that originated from blood covenants but i close with these prophetic declarations over you the god of vengeance has risen and shall fight your battle in jesus name. i declare and declare every blood crying over your breakthrough i declare that the blood of jesus silences those voices today in the name of jesus i declare the god of elijah will arise and avenge for you he will fight for you he will fight for your children. He will fight for your career. He will fight for your business in Jesus' name. The Lord's table. Amen, somebody. Mark chapter 4, verse 11. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come as what? Parable. It's expected that you know. Say, I will know. Declare, I will know. The mystery behind the communion is the depth of which the body of Christ, the early church, that was the mystery that gave them victory. Acts chapter 2 verse 46. There was something about the early church that was their victory. At this time it looks as if the body of Christ, the church and the nation has come under persecution. This mystery needs to be revisited for us to have a, an outstanding victory in the name of Jesus. So the Bible says, so continuing daily, somebody say daily, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, 
they did four things number one they continued daily number two they were breaking bread and they were breaking this bread after they finished breaking in the temple they continued to break in their houses amen the breaking of the bread did not end in the temple the breaking of the bread continued what in their houses from house to house they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart and the lord will have this to say to every family that make sure that your family breaks this bread again at this time of siege the lord will have me to say this to everyone in this east gate 12 midnight we wake up and break this communion when i'm done some of us will catch revelation that will break communion three times a day because there's something we need to bring to pass and we need to fasten it but that is when you understand what we are doing a number of christians today partake of communion they eat the bread which is the flesh and drink the wine without a good understanding of what they are doing and so it becomes to us a religion or it becomes to us a tradition or it becomes to us a routine to share of the lost table though we don't understand it or partake of it as regular as we ought to with understanding we will partake regular as we ought to in the name of jesus on the other hand some of us who understand sometimes they don't have the depths of it so if we have to enjoy it we have to get to the scripture and we have to get the foundation of the scripture let's look at the book of first corinthians chapter 11 from verse 24 to 26 and the bible said and when he had given thanks he broke it he broke it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you do this in the remembrance of me verse 25 in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood these do as often somebody say as often as you drink it in the remembrance of what me verse 26 as often as you do it for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death till he comes you do what proclaim the lost death let's look at the new living translation you proclaim the lost death you know this is the time that we need to keep proclaiming this is the only reason why the god of vengeance wins and fights a battle uninterrupted in jesus name let's start from verse 24 again let's look at it from new living translation and the bible said he gave thanks to god for it then he broke it in pieces he broke it in pieces and said this is my body which is given for you do this to remember me do this to do what remember me so every time you want to remember him you take the body praise god the body remembers him breaking of the body remembers him the body is a reminder of the side that was pierced it's a reminder of the head that was pierced by the crown it's a reminder of the hands that were pierced it's a reminder of the lashes that he took for your sake amen somebody amen somebody every time that you bring the communion and you are breaking the body what you are remembering is he took it and he bore it he took it he did what he bore it he took my pain he took my soul he was chastised for me he took that sickness and by his stripe i am healed in the name of jesus every time i take on the communion i look at the part of my body that is wounded and i take the bread and i say he has been wounded for my sake he took it and i remember what he has done for me he bore it he has carried my soul and i am free verse 25 in the same way he took the cup of wine after supper saying 
this cup is a new covenant between God and his people an agreement confirmed with my blood do this to remember me as often as you drink it he took the cup of wine after supper saying this cup is the new what covenant between God and his what people is an agreement with my blood the communion is an agreement with his blood amen somebody verse 26 for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup you are announcing the lost death until he comes again every time you eat the bread and drink this cup you are doing what you are announcing the lost what until he comes again every time you do it every time means every time you do it every time as often as you do it as often you announce the lost death and as often as you do it it's as often that you announce his coming amen somebody what is communion john chapter 6 verse 53 what is communion somebody jesus said again i tell you the truth unless jesus then said to them most assuredly i say to you unless you eat of the flesh of the son of man and drink this blood you have no life in you no life did you see that in clear time jesus shows us what the communion is all about the truth and the understanding for us is as clear as a mystery jesus said i said to you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and you drink the blood you have no life can i explain to you what it's like you know what your physical bread does when you eat your physical bread it gives you physical strength your physical bread does what gives you physical strength to your physical body if you don't drink water your physical body gets drained if you don't eat and you don't drink for some time your physical body begins to die now listen people such is your spiritual body when you take communion it gives life to your spiritual body amen somebody amen somebody amen somebody the essence of life and strength to your physical body is what communion what water does to your physical body is what the blood of jesus does as life to your spiritual body amen somebody amen somebody amen somebody that is to say that if you are under the sound of my voice you have not been eating the bread and you have not been drinking the blood that your spiritual man can be worshipped that your spiritual man can be malnourished that your spiritual man can be weak that you may find yourself becoming so weak in the spiritual realm that you didn't know when you began to lose your battle when you began to lose faith when you begin to lose interest in spiritual things when did i begin to be distracted when did i begin to derail when did i begin not to have a sound judgment it is just like the physical body that you have deprived from food and water if you start speaking less if you stop fighting at the point before it dies it begins to diminish i decree and i declare to somebody under the sound of my voice who has neglected his spiritual body who has forgotten to eat his spiritual food and to drink his spiritual wine which is the blood so that your spirit man can become alive that the word of god will release a mystery with understanding again upon and unto you in the name of jesus christ i activate this day hunger to your spiritual man hunger to your spiritual body test to your inner man test to drink hunger to eat test to drink hunger to eat now receive it in the name of jesus receive it hunger to eat the body of christ hunger you don't just do a religious thing when you don't eat the body you feel
feel that something is missing just like you feel when you are hungry you know how you have the desire and the passion oh i want to eat on your soup so shall it be for you and not for you today but we hunger to fix your spiritual man let that desire let that passion for the flesh go into the passion for the things of the spirit this morning in the name of jesus i call for the passion and the hunger in your inner man to desire spiritual food and spiritual drink which is the body of jesus and the blood of jesus as you eat the body your spiritual man comes alive as you drink the blood your spiritual man comes alive so when you notice that you have become spiritually weak what is saying is time to return to the communion table just like you know when you go to the canteen to eat return to the communion table as you go to your dining to feast return to the communion table madabo rega mana gade zegande gabo rika ba 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 rena kante gabo reka bo sha kante gade legande gade ira guru gushiki dida ana ina gunde gaba mata kante kafe she kante gabo rika ba sha kante i pray for light i pray for light i pray for illumination i pray for hunger i pray for thirst for righteousness for you this morning in the name of jesus rega ana gana gudi mana gade bosha kante gade every passion that you have every desire for your flesh that will not allow your spiritual man to come alive i bind the powers of the flesh i bind the adventure spirits that keeps your appetite for the things of the world sharp every distraction that comes for your worldly appetite i bind them in the name of jesus i decree from the altar no appetite for worldliness and for worldly things are transferred today for your spiritual well-being some of us understand when we used to fast uninterrupted remember those days you knew the value for communion you know one of the things that covid did was that it made people to sit at home they couldn't share they couldn't partake of communion and since that 2020 a time came even to touch the communion one was afraid even the communion of a handshake let alone to eat the communion and some of us we just drifted off and then returned after covid and it just continued but we did not activate we did not come back to the revelation and if you are among those that disconnected their spiritual power lost your lifeline and just became a normal and a nominal christian as a result of that season of transaction of being alone may god almighty today by the communion of our fellowship this morning by the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit by the spirit of wisdom and revelation made available to us by the just man made perfect i decree and declare this morning in the name of jesus that there be a reactivation a coming alive and a renewal of every altar a personal altar everybody's home altar every person's you know some of us may have to at the end of this meeting see you may have to really think seriously about how to raise a communion table in your home we have to think about it so then let's look at the content what is the content of the communion table what is the content let's look at the content let's look at it very well matthew chapter 26 verse 26 let's have an x-ray of this content if you look at it and there's an understanding by this x-raying of this content i trust god for you that the more understanding you have the more they desire from the above scripture that we have read we are going to see two contents of the communion the first one is the flesh the first content of communion is what the flesh he says as they were eating jesus took some bread and blessed it then he took it in pieces and gave it to the disciples and saying take this and eat it for this is my body let's look at the book of john chapter 6 verse 55 jesus also referred to it as his flesh for my flesh is food indeed and my blood is what is what yes he refers it as what food his body is what his flesh his body is what his flesh 
and it is food indeed. Amen, somebody.